Hello, good morning and a warm welcome to the kitchen table this morning. Today is Palm Sunday, a day where we remember Jesus riding into Jerusalem, the crowd singing Hosanna, laying before him palm leaves, cloaks, adoring his majesty. Palm Sunday is a day of celebration but it's a day that leads into Holy Week and Holy Week is where we step closer and closer and closer to the cross on Good Friday and then towards the empty tomb of Resurrection Sunday. It is Holy Week that expresses everything that Jesus is everything that Jesus came to our world for, his transforming love and his breaking of the chains of sin and death by his resurrection. For Christians everywhere this is such an important day and week. So a very warm welcome to you as we begin the journey together today. I hope you've got something to eat and something to drink. The words will be up on the wall and if you feel able to then do please join in. We're going to take just a moment of quiet as we make ourselves ready. Your king is coming to you. Humble riding on a donkey, on a donkey's foal. Hosanna, Hosanna in the highest. Blessed is the one who comes in the Lord's name. Glory to God, Hosanna. Open the gates, open the gates, welcome the king. Open the gates, open the gates, sing praises to God. Open the gates. Open the gates, let everyone rejoice. Are you ready to open the gates of your hearts, of your minds, of your very being? Let us pray. Lord God, loving friend and parent, you deserve our worship, our love and our devotion because you have entered our broken world you have joined us on our journey of pain and pleasure, of sorrow and joy, and have given us access to life eternal and abundant. We lift our voices to praise you, O God. We celebrate your coming to us, not with political power or military might, not with glamour or fame or wealth, but in humility and love, gently and with great compassion. We lift our voices to praise you, O God. Amen. An important part of our Palm Sunday celebrations is the blessing of the Palm Crosses. If we were gathering in church, and some of us will be this morning, but for many others we'll still be at home. But that blessing of a palm cross that we hold in our hands on that day and in our homes for the whole year as we remember the promise of our hosannas, save us Lord. I'm going to bless these this morning and if you've not been able to get to church or you aren't able to ask anyone to pick a palm cross up do please let me know and i can drop you as one of these blessed crosses to you so that you'll have it with you as that reminder of the glory of our god of jesus as he enters into jerusalem and way beyond so we're going to say a prayer of blessing God our Saviour, whose Son Jesus Christ entered Jerusalem as Messiah to suffer and to die. 
let these palms be for us signs of his victory and grant that we who bear them in his name may ever hail him as our king and follow him in the way that leads to eternal life. Amen. That symbol of that cross. We talked about opening the gates, making the town ready, making our hearts ready. Open up the gates, but make way in your own hearts. So we're going to sing this morning, make way, make way. And as we sing it, think about what that means to you. How are you going to make way for your Lord and King this Easter? I hope you enjoy. the king in splendor arrives fling wide the gates and welcome him into your lives make way make way for the king of kings make way make way and let his kingdom end here comes the broken hearts to about how you're going to make way. For me that includes how I am going to try and change the way that I live my life. And we come to a time of confession. We gather each week and each week we bring our sorry to God and it can feel like it's the same thing we say sorry for again and again and again. We are blessed by a God who loves us and knows our desire to change, to transform, to become truly his. So we're going to take a moment with that intention in our hearts and words spoken to God that only he hears about how we are ready to say sorry and to act sorry and to receive forgiveness. For shouting your praises, but forgetting your world. Lord, have mercy and forgive us. For voices raised in anger, not in joy. Amen. 
Lord, have mercy and forgive us. For times of selfishness and greed, not of sharing. Lord, have mercy and forgive us. For grabbing our places and pushing out the poor. Lord, have mercy and forgive us. For thinking of glory and ignoring the cross. Lord, have mercy and forgive us. The life of God will not be denied. It travels before us and between us in brave clarity. We are offered full forgiveness in this moment. Receive it as a truly gracious gift and know you are forgiven. Amen. In that place of forgiveness, we're going to hear the gospel reading for today. It comes from John's Gospel, chapter 12, beginning to read at verse 12. And I'm using the Poverty and Justice Bible, which is a contemporary translation. The next day, a large crowd was in Jerusalem for Passover. When they heard that Jesus was coming for the festival, they took palm branches and went out to greet him they shouted, Hosanna! God bless the one who comes in the name of the Lord. God bless the King of Israel. Jesus found a donkey and rode on it, just as the scriptures say. People of Jerusalem, don't be afraid. Your King is now coming. He is riding on a donkey. At first, Jesus' disciples did not understand but after he had been given his glory, they remembered all this. Everything had happened exactly as the scriptures said it would. This is the word of the Lord. Thanks be to God. Pam Sunday. Every year I am really struck by the confusion of the crowds that, that welcome Jesus with those hosannas, with those palm trees, the leaves, the cloaks thrown in front of his donkey, praising him, shouting, Hosanna! Hosanna means save us, or in some translations, saviour. Hosanna was a cry from the heart. Can you imagine how it felt? Just actually take a moment, close your eyes, imagine you there in the midst of it. Palm trees waving, maybe causing draughts, dust, smells, sounds, everybody crying and shouting and Jesus riding through, working his way into the city, surrounded by adoration. In John's Gospel it's quite clear that the disciples are thinking what on earth is going on? This is the man who tells us not to share news, to be quiet, not to tell everyone that he is our king and yet now he is here 
and he is riding on a donkey. He's fulfilling scriptures and he is owning his kingship. Hosanna, save us. I don't know about you, but this year there have been so many times when I have cried out to God to save us in the midst of this pandemic. When we have been in isolation, in loss, in fear. When we have experienced loneliness, frustration, when we have lived lives differently than we had ever dreamed a possibility. I for one have cried, save us, so many times. The people that cried, save us, that morning were living under oppression. The Romans were ruling. People knew what it was like to have hunger, to have poverty even whatever they were earning, huge taxes were taken off them. There were hierarchy, hierarchies of power making life hard again and again and again for the ordinary people. The men, the women and the children. They were desperate for someone to come and save them. They were desperate to find that Messiah, that hope that was promised to them. Now whither those crowds that were gathered were people of Jerusalem or whether it was some of the many who had come in for the Passover festival, those beyond the gates of Jerusalem. The story of Jesus had reached them. They had heard of the healings, of the miracles, of the things this man was doing. And they came and they cried out, save us, saviour. For all of us, as we have lived our lives across the years and especially in that, this last year, there have been moments, I think, where we have celebrated the small things in life. We've grabbed hold of the things that are important to us. For many people it's been about a photograph of Instagram, it might be about a roast dinner that somebody has cooked you with love, it might be your grandchildren doing something amazing, it might be that you've learnt an instrument, completed a, a jigsaw puzzle. Everything that we have done that has been of the ordinary takes on that extraordinary when there is nothing else much to compare it with. And Instagram and Facebook are full of these images, as are letters, photographs sent maybe to extended family at a distance, sending postcards with love, just little snapshots of things that are happening in lives. It's easy to do those things, but actually when you take a moment, maybe it's across a park bench now when you have a coffee with a friend. It might be over a phone call or maybe on one of those Zoom calls that is just quiet and allows you to listen. In those moments, we move from the chaos and the adoration of everything that's happening in our life to the story of our hearts. When we hear the depth of the emotions that we are feeling, so many of us, the pain, the struggle, the helplessness. Just like the people in Jerusalem, when it's easy to be joyous and happy and part of a crowd with an expectation and a hope. And yet the reality is that it can feel hopeless. It can feel as though there is nobody there to save us. It can feel as though 
life is just too much and we can't see a way out. For me, that explains the way the crowd changes. But for me, there's another expectation, I think, that makes the crowds change from Hosanna at the beginning of Holy Week to crucify him on that Friday where Jesus is on that cross. You see, people are looking for a saviour. Everybody wants somebody to come and make everything okay for them. You and I want someone to come and make everything right for us. That's what we expect in our world. That's what a saviour might mean to you or to me. Jesus rode into that city, rode into your lives and my life with a different agenda. Yes, he came to save, but he came to save and transform. How many of us want to be saved as long as it doesn't mean that we have to think about doing anything any differently? How easy is it for us to just go through the motions of waving a palm cross, of saying, Hosanna, but actually not really wanting to look in the mirror and think about how, if I am to be saved and to be transformed, that will look, excuse me. <coughs> Sorry. Salvation is a gift from God. Jesus came that we are saved. But that transformation means that you and I have to also engage with that. Maybe breaking some old habits that we've had for a lifetime. How often do we judge? How often do we get crossed by other people's behaviour? Whether you've been watching the news and watching the violence on the television as people have been causing chaos and other people have been protesting peacefully, quietly, wanting to protect something that they feel is important, like the law that we live by, the enshrined right to stand up to those who are in authority and say, hmm, but not in my name. There's a balance to be had. I think we've watched on our screens people who have had a heart to protest with the really honest motivations and maybe we've seen other people who just like a good excuse for a ruck and really destructive behaviour. But rather than us looking and judging and saying who's right, are either of them right or should we just put up and shut up? Rather than saying, how were they raised? Rather than saying, who's responsible for this? Should we be praying, actually, for people to understand what it is to be transformed when you care about the other's experience more than you care about your own? Where you're understanding that the world becomes a better place when we care for each other in the fullest sense of the word. And when we care for one, on, one another, we do not act in violent ways. When we care for one another, we don't use words that barb and hurt. We don't use power or we don't use sarcasm or we don't use the things that can make people bleed even if it's just become a lifetime's habit of putting others down. It's tough, isn't it, when you start to look at how you are living your life and what it means for you to wave that cross and shout, Hosanna! And I'm not sat here judging you. 
I'm sat here judging myself, thinking about how I live my life, where I get too sharp or too cross too quickly, where I judge others. If we all do that, if we all explore what it means to be saved, what it means to be transformed, we will all have to do some adjusting. We'll all have to think about how we live our lives so that everyone might flourish. Jesus came to save us and to transform us. What does that mean for you today? Are you ready to be transformed? To lay down some of the things that you hold because they make you feel safe or secure or better and actually lay them down so that someone else might feel safe and secure and better. The Church of England are at this moment making plans for the next 10 years of life in it they are asking us to become a simpler church, a humbler church and a bolder church. And in it they are asking us to think about what it is to be a disciple of Jesus. To be Christ-like in how we live our lives. Not just on a Sunday when we come and we sing our praises to God, but in every moment and every sphere of our life to allow Christ to be our motivator, our guide, the one who challenges us. For the church to engage with that, it means you and I need to engage with that. It means our bishops and archbishops need to engage with that. And we need to think about what it means to cry Hosanna, to really mean it and to step forward boldly into everything that Christ has ready for us as we step out of a pandemic and into a new way of living and as we step out of a church that has maybe been stuck in a mould for a long time and think about how that might look in a different way. Keeping some traditions letting others go, building new ones, all of them about us crying Hosanna and not needing to cry crucify because we're not afraid to stand before God and say I am yours. Amen. We are going to share an affirmation of faith. The creed is going to be slightly differently spoken this week. I would really ask you to pray it as we say it. And if at the end of the service you think, I'm not sure about that, go back, rewind, maybe pray it again and know that as we affirm our faith in God, as we truly choose to be Christ-like. We don't do it on our own because we have a God that is greater than words can describe. So we believe in the God who is the pillar of fire and the pillar of cloud. We trust in our holy parents who judges and shows mercy. We hope in our Creator who is faithful to all that is, seen and unseen. We believe in Jesus who rode in triumph into Jerusalem. We trust in the Messiah who was crucified, died and was buried. We hope in the living Christ 
who walked out of the tomb. We believe in the Holy Spirit, giver of faith and formation. We trust in the breath of life who stirs, sustains and sanctifies. We hope in our advocate who brings to us and through us the gift of God's peace. Amen. We're going to sing King of Kings, Majesty. Majesty, God of heaven, living in me, gentle Savior, closest friend, strong deliverer, beginning and end, all within me falls at your throne. going to have a time of intercessions. Do please bow your heads in prayer. Let us pray to the Father who loved the world so much that he sent his only son to give us life. Simon from Sereni was forced to carry the cross for your son. Give us grace to lift heavy loads from those we meet and to stand with those condemned to die. Lord, in your mercy, hear our prayer. Your son watched the soldiers gamble to share his clothes. Transform the hearts of those who make a profit from their victims and those whose hearts are hardened by their work. Lord, in your mercy, hear our prayer. 
the thief who was crucified with Jesus was promised a place in your kingdom. Give pardon and hope, healing and peace to all who look death in the face. Lord, in your mercy, hear our prayer. From the cross, Jesus entrusted Mary, his mother, and John, his disciple, to each other's care. Help us also to care for one another and fill our homes with the spirit of your love. Lord, in your mercy, hear our prayer. In Mary and John, your son created a new family at the cross. Fill our relationships and those of new families today with mutual care and responsibility and give us a secure hope for the future. Lord, in your mercy, Hear our prayer. The centurion was astonished to see your glory in the crucified Messiah. Open the eyes of those who do not know you to see in your Son the meaning of life and death. Lord, in your mercy, hear our prayer. Joseph of Arathmea came to take your son's body away. Give hope and faith to the dying and the bereaved and gentleness to those who minister to them. Lord, in your mercy, hear our prayer. Simon and Joseph, Mary and John, became part of your church in Jerusalem. Bring into your church today a varied company of people to walk with Christ in the way of his passion and to find their salvation in the victory of his cross. Merciful Father, accept these prayers for the sake of your Son, our Saviour, Jesus Christ. Amen. And we join those prayers together. As our Saviour taught us, so we pray. Our Father in heaven, hallowed be your name. Your kingdom come, your will be done, on earth as in heaven. Give us today our daily bread. Forgive us our sins, as we forgive those who sin against us. Lead us not into temptation, but deliver us from evil. For the kingdom, the power and the glory are yours, now and forever. Amen. We come to a time of the peace. Since we are justified by faith, we have peace with God through our Lord Jesus Christ, who has given us access to his grace. The peace of the Lord be always with you. Amen. We come to a time of a meal of remembrance. So I hope you've got something to eat and something to drink. As we remember that night where Jesus celebrated with his disciples the Passover meal. A night where he asked them to eat and remember. To drink and remember. So with those who put down their hearts in welcome and those who clutch doubts behind their back, we join in songs of praise. Holy, holy, holy are you, stone mason of salvation. All creation joins in recognising this moment of grace. Hosanna in the highest. Blessed is the one who is peace and glory for us. 
Hosanna in the highest. Setting aside privilege and power, holy God, your child, our brother, chose to be made in our image so we might see you face to face. He could have bossed us around telling us what to do, but chose to teach us compassion because that was what was in his heart. He could have turned his back on us or kept his ears blocked, but chose to listen to our stories, to listen to our hearts breaking. He could have hardened his face in judgment for our foolish choices, but turned it towards what awaited him, in that place where people would reject him, friends would betray and deny him, the powers would condemn him, death would claim victory over him until you raised him in resurrection life. As we seek to follow in the coming days, as we remember all he said and did, we proclaim that great mystery we call faith. Jesus died willing to suffer for others. Jesus was raised, exalted by God for his faithfulness. Jesus will come so we may once again cry, blessed is the one who comes in peace and glory. So here as we eat and remember, the weary are sustained and the simple gifts of bread and wine are transformed into the treasures of your heart. As the bread whose brokenness reminds us of the one who is willing to suffer for all, may we be reminded that the Lord needs us to worship with the outcast as well as the privileged, to work with the hopeless as well as the arrogant, in every place we can, in every word we speak. As we drink, may we remember the one emptied himself for those around him, and that he needs us to do everything we are asked, as we bend our knees to reach down, to seek for justice for the oppressed, to cradle the heartbroken, and to hear the stories of those who grieve. And when we are gathered by the one who will come in peace and glory, to bring us to the table of grace, we will sing of that name above all other names, forever praising you for your steadfast love, God in community, holy in one. Amen. So we take, we eat and we remember. And we drink in the promise of our Lord. Let us pray. Loving God, we pray that you will fling open the gates of our hearts. As we imagine ourselves as part of the crowds, crying out to you, Hosanna, save us, be our saviour. And Lord, help us be transformed into all that you would have us be this day and into eternity. Amen. We have our notices. Do please look on screens at the end of the service as we will have service times and what's happening on those notices. So please just have a read at your leisure, press pause so you can see what's going on. The church is opening up. We are going slowly and steadily and we are keeping a, a good eye on everything that's happening. We are remaining covidly secure, which means masks, distance, 
sanitised hands. The service is still no singing yet in church and we are still going to be worshipping from the kitchen table. So it's both ways of connecting with one another. I hope that you are feeling the confidence to start to gather and step out and over the coming weeks as we are able to meet in gardens and in groups of six and then larger groups eventually hopefully by the summer we are able to begin to interact with one another again to be the body of Christ in this town to be out there serving our people in whatever ways we are able to a time of hope a time of change a time of new ways of worshipping God we are also going to be having three candidates for interviews in April so do please hold those three candidates in your prayers that we might be able to discern God's will for this town so do please continue to hold them in your thoughts and prayers if you need anything do please ring and if you are watching this and thinking I've never been to church then you'd be most welcome if it's something you want to come along and try it's not quite church as we would normally have it but it is a place of welcome and of worship so do just step across the threshold you'll have a warm welcome and we will be delighted to continue to meet with you if you're not up for going into church back here again at the kitchen table this week during holy week we are going to have the stations of the cross on monday tuesday and wednesday evening the stations of the cross telling the story of jesus journeying towards the cross with all the pain that that entails but the challenge of our faith is that we hear that story so if you haven't ever heard the stations of the cross before i would commend them to you we'll be putting them up every evening for you to be able to spend some time with them and just know that story and feel the gift of love that jesus gives to each and every one of us thursday evening you'll see on the screen at the end of the service that we will be inviting you to go to the cathedral in salisbury to their service to join in with a eucharist at 7 30. so do please do that and enjoy everything that they have to offer us and we'll be in st andrew's church two o'clock on good friday as we spend that last hour thinking about that moment on the cross and when we have journeyed with Jesus to that point we will be meeting again on Easter day to celebrate the empty tomb and the risen Christ in Easter celebrations in church and here at the kitchen table so I hope to see you then we're going to have today's sending oh no we're not we're going to sing Hosanna. We've got to do that one today, haven't we? Enjoy.
going to have ascending. Now we will set aside our palm branches and go to serve at God's side in a broken and fearful world. Now we will pick up our cloaks and follow Jesus wherever he leads to learn from those the world ignores and to be touched by the grace within them. Now we will sing songs of wonder as we work alongside the Spirit, sustaining the weary with peace and hope. So may hosannas of joy sound in all the earth, welcoming the one who looked evil in the face. And may the presence of God lift high your hopes for the transforming of life and the blessing of God Almighty. Father, Son and Holy Spirit, be among you and remain with you always. Amen. Do enjoy our final blessing and don't forget to read the notices. See you on Wednesday at the kitchen table as well as Monday, Tuesday, Wednesday, Stations of the Cross. Take care. God bless. Bye for now.